went to Sunday <laughs> was the day this whole town ended. <laughs> <laughs> Corporate America bought the whole thing, hired Israelis to build the Kodak Center, opened the gates, and let anyone in. <laughs> <laughs> the Academy Awards became the Super Bowl, and the once August event that examined cinema achievement became a tailgate party for publicists morons and fat guys with cameras in their cell phones <laughs> that photographed poopa-eyed girls playing runways with dresses and handbags. <laughs> <laughs> it also was, they used to be on Mondays and it was a Hollywood holiday just for us. And if you were working on a movie that day, you were wrapped early and went home feeling that you were in a special club. <laughs> I remember when the palm trees were short and Tomorrowland was modern. <laughs> I am a native of Los Angeles. And we used to swim in that ocean in Malibu, aluminum foil bright, endless horizons of salt, foam, and money in front of Mary Tyler Moore's house. And from the safety of my boogie board, I watched her walk around, and I got it. <laughs> <laughs> I just felt connected to this special world here and the trouble that it creates when one person turns themselves into a carnival for mass consumption. It's unsettling to watch, especially now in these increasingly boorish streets, when the movie business will now merge with the gaming business and the Chinese will take it over, and the corner will have been turned, and all of this, all of this, will be slightly gone. I honestly don't care if you call me prissy. I am old-fashioned. I'm a character out of Balzac. <laughs> I'm old, and I plan to get older. I want to look older, and I'm not getting any face work either, because the, dermatis the dermatologist gave me two options in a facelift. You get two options. Siegfried or Roy. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like cloth baskets. I like tennis. I like movie stars. And I'm quite repelled by the likes of TMZ and Harvey Levin with his posse of gay for pay, bare backing pussy boys <laughs> calling themselves journalists, but <laughs> hey, I can't say things like that. <laughs> I always felt that I had to take the high road because my parents once told me early on in their Bronx-tinged accent, hey, you're in the movies, and don't think for a second ever that people are not going to pay attention to you. <laughs> I am in the movies. I've been in about 30 movies. It's my business, my health plan, <laughs> my pension. <laughs> I've sung in the movies, I've danced in the movies, I've fucked in the movies, I've crystal whipped Bruce Willis in the movies, I styled Stuart Little. <laughs> <laughs> Some people ask me, honestly, what was it like working with that mouse? <laughs> <laughs> Which, by the way, was a ping pong ball. Oh. Oh. And I say very seriously, it was like working with Bruce Willis. <laughs> <laughs> I played an alien in the Flintstones, produced by Steven Spielberg, and I was just sexually assaulted by Sigourney Weaver in a vampire movie coming out at the end of June! Yay! <laughs> I um, descend from a long line of character actors, Henry Travers, Eric Bloor, Eve Arden. <laughs> <laughs> Those actors prove that the doorman or the cab driver are just as important as the star. <laughs> movie stars, movie stars, they came out of clans. <laughs> and it's so much more complex than you can even imagine because I believe, honestly, that movies were my destiny. The movies are ingrained in the chemical legacy of my upbringing, and they can be traced back to my birth. Because you see, our first house was in Echo Park, and was actually located on the former Mac Senate Comedy Studio on Alvarado and Alessandro Street. I found out about this historical fact much later, but 
in that house that I grew up on, in with its freshly ironed drapes, there was a spell, because it was right there on the site that the Keystone Cops frolicked and Charlie Chaplin developed his tramp character. Mm -hmm. And I can honestly say that I grew up on the Senate lot. <laughs> <laughs> in that bungalow with its palm tree and angry backyard that smelled of mint, there was a chicken that sang behind an ivy wall. And thinking back now, that chicken probably had a contract. Yeah. <laughs> On more than one occasion, people have come up to me and they've pointed their finger very close to my head and they yell out, look at this guy's face. Are you a movie star? <laughs> to me, a movie star is Gene Kelly, an American in Paris, when he was lifting Leslie Caron. <coughs> For a short time, my grandmother lived with us in that house and she taught me about movie stars and movies and how they possessed a language of their own. She would actually wake me up out of a cold sleep to come down and watch Call of the Wild, Loretta Young dying in the snow with Clark Gable, and we loved how much they loved one another. Loretta Young was in The Bishop's Wife where she gets hits up, because she gets hit, hits on by the angel played by Cary Grant, and we loved Loretta Young. <laughs> my grandmother was a Roosevelt Democrat and was my biggest supporter. My grandmother was always getting married to people. <laughs> and we ran with a very bohemian crowd that included lesbians that had fled Fidel Castro's Cuba, violin soloists, Freudians. <laughs> One of the guys that she ran with was called Irv Waring, who was a sound man at the Mark Taper Forum. And she convinced Irv to take me down there and observe the proceedings from a light booth. I had never been in a theater. The show was called Forget Me Not Lane and starred Bud Cork, fresh from Harold and Maud. After the show, I stood backstage and Irv explained they had to finish up the business and that I should sit in the hallway. He'd be back in 15 minutes. Don't move. Alone, I felt at ease in the deep intensity of the feeling backstage. It felt like I was in church, but I was in God's dressing room. <laughs> Around the corner, an older man and a woman walked by me and the man stopped right in front of me and then stepped up with authority and he asked me, why was I sitting backstage alone? And then he asked, how old am I? And I said, I'm 13, I'm waiting for Irv Waring. <laughs> and then he asked me to come with him, and the woman nodded. And I said, well, Irv wanted me to stay here. And he said, Irv will find you. I'm Groucho Marx. <laughs> <laughs> I followed Groucho Marx. <laughs> <laughs> I followed those people to Bud Court's dressing room, and Groucho was very kind and warm to me. And he kept me close, and he'd go, <laughs> He took out of his wallet and showed me a picture of his grandson, and he was very warm. When my grandmother found out that I met Captain Spaulding, she was very impressed. <laughs> and after that, whenever a Marx Brothers movie came on, I was allowed to cut school legally and watch it. <laughs> <laughs> I did atmosphere work in more than 20 movies before I was ever able to speak a line. And my big break in the movies came when I was 18. I was an extra in the movie, The Main Event, hmm. which was a boxing movie starring Ryan O'Neill and Barbara Streisand. I was chosen personally by Howard Zeke, the director, out of an entire crowd to be bumped up and given what they call business in a movie. I became SAG. The business was going to be hoisting a large video camera over my shoulder and point this fake camera at Barbara Streisand. For two weeks, I pointed this camera at her. She had the biggest hands I had ever seen. Before. <laughs> and she was so peaceful, she ate her in and out burgers in a fox coat. <laughs> she went like this to me. <laughs> now, you can see me in the final scene of the movie when Barbara throws up the towel in the air to declare the fight is over so she won't lose getting Ryan O'Neill as her boyfriend. And I had no idea if I'd be in the movie at all, so when it came out, I went alone. As I still do to the movies on a meaty, bright, sunny Wednesday afternoon, <coughs> matinee, Roman's Chinese, and there I was, bigger than life, right next to Barbara Streisand. Google it. <laughs> <laughs> do whatever you got to do tonight, but you'll see it. Closing credits, <laughs> main event. <laughs> and when the title song plays you, and you hear the words "extra, extra," you see me. <laughs> A psychic once told me, she said, you had great success, and you were snuffed out, and you came back quickly to accomplish what it is that you set out to do in the first place. 
She told me I lived an entire lifetime during silent films. I can't argue reincarnation, but I remember the other Hollywood. This Hollywood doesn't seem right at all. The Hollywood freeway dissecting it diagonally? That's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> because I can remember when Vine Streets and La Brea Streets and Coenga Streets <clears throat> gently rose and then disappeared into the scrubby hillsides. The air was sweet with jasmine and burnt baked pies. So now I stand here and watch the Oscars and see all these snookies and these situations and these gay wows cutting down <laughs> in their game-changing cargo pants and fuck you flip-flops. <laughs> and I wonder if they even know about Groucho and the intimacy of Harpo's music. They're all wearing Frank Sinatra's hat, but do they know about Frankie? <laughs> My grandmother left our bungalow on the Senate lot and moved away and married a merchant marine that she met in Redondo Beach who sold <laughs> pot and drove a woody. <laughs> and that's true. <laughs> and the only movies I ever saw with her again were Herbie, The Love Bug, <laughs> and Plaza Suite. <laughs> but I thank her for my cinematic education and ultimate introduction to Groucho Marx. I'm thankful for being able to be in all those movies and all the things that come with it, like this, to be part of the team. I am grateful mostly that I am not Ricky Gervais. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I gotta tell you, the other day I, I, I fucked Ricky Gervais in the asshole. <laughs> it's a joke! <laughs> 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 not stop myself. It was the first time and the last time I ever did it, but I walked up to her and I stuck out my hand. She was carrying a bone bag. She had a bone suit. She had bone shoes. Everything was bone, bone, bone. <laughs> <laughs> and she shook my hand and she asked me my name. And at the time, my name was Brad. And I said, Brad. And then she introduced me to her companions with great carefulness. This is Mr. Miller and this is Mr. Carlisle and this is Brad. How nice that you said hello. Thank you. And then she stepped away. And then in that exchange, in that 30 seconds that she took out of her life, she demonstrated what courtesy and manners were to a very impressionable 17 year old boy. She rose to the occasion and she set the bar for me today. And now when I find myself in an Albertsons. <laughs> 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 Some crypt, blood, or homeless person extends a somewhat soiled finger right into my face and says, Hey, aren't you a movie star? I look at them straight in the eyes and I say very calmly and very serenely, I'm Loretta Young. <laughs>